Hi and welcome to the sew along for the willow. So this is a knit garment. Our seam allowances are six mil, which is quarter of an inch. And we're going to use a four thread overlock to sew this. You're also going to need to find a way of sewing your hem. So a twin needle or a cover stitch machine would be good. Or you could use a um, stitch on a domestic sewing machine. Make sure you have ball or jersey needles to stop any fraying or any holes forming in your fabric as you go. So this um, has a lined hood. I'm not going to change my overlocker colour as I go, but um, you can change your colours if you want and we'll just get started. So I'm going to start off with the hood lining. So the hood is in three pieces. We have a centre strip in it and then we have a pair which is also called two mirrors. We've cut out one like this and one like this. So what we need to do is sew the curve edge to the straight edge of the centre piece. The main thing you'll need to know with this piece is one end is small and one end is large. So the small end is the neck end. So take the small end and then take one of the curved pieces and match it right side together and when we match it we want the neck ends to be together now as you go up the side there'll be a notch to match and you just need to make sure that, that matches all the way through So once you have one side stitched into place, match the other side. So remember the big edge is the straight opening and the smaller edge is the neck opening. Repeat the process for the outer piece of the hood, but just remember if you do want to put a drawstring through, just up from the front there'll be a drill hole. So that position, um, you can either do it before or after you stitch the main part of the hood together. Um, you can stitch an eyelet, you could stitch a buttonhole, or you could punch a metal grommet into place there. So that will be marked with a drill hole. Now because this fabric is really light, I'm not going to um, but it is certainly an option. So when you've completed that, what I've done just to make life easier for myself is I've gone to my iron and I've pressed the hem into place on the long straight edge. So this is a one inch, two and a half centimetre hem allowance and you'll know that this is the correct turn because there'll be a notch here to follow all the way up through to the other side. So just go and press that into place now and we can continue. To sew buttonholes on the hood pieces, the first thing you need to find is the drill hole position, or the position of the marked buttonhole. So you can stitch an eyelet or you could stitch a buttonhole. I'm going to stitch a buttonhole and when we stitch it, you need to make sure it's um, parallel to the straight edge and centered on that drill mark position. Although you could just use that as the start if you wanted to. So what I'm doing, because this is a knit fabric, is I'm going to use some tear away stabilizer and that just stops, um, it just stops the fabric from being chewed up down the bottom. So I'm placing the stabilizer directly underneath my position and I've put the smallest button I could possibly find into my buttonhole attachment. 
and now right side up, it's really important, right side up, I'm going to lower my presser foot and make sure everything is parallel. And you know what, I can actually center that um, on the buttonhole, if you, the, on the drill mark if you want to, it's just a guideline, you just need to make sure that that um, is away from the neck edge really. And when you're ready, make sure you put your little um, buttonhole attachment in properly and you set your buttonhole. And all I'm going to do is press start and let it stitch. So once you've done that on one side, go ahead and repeat it on the other side. Don't forget to um, pop a little snip in them and then put those away somewhere safe and we'll deal with them later. So now we're going to work on the fronts. I'm not going to sew a pocket in the sage green colour. I'll insert the video of sewing it in a different colour and I'll just jump straight through this section. To complete the pocket, take one of the pocket pieces, place it right side up and find this long angled edge and overlock the edge of it. Now if you're using a cover seamer, you can skip this step and just cover stitch this all in one. So if you're using a cover seamer, what you'll do is turn that to the wrong side and just cover stitch that at one inch. So what I'm going to do now is go to my iron and press that at one inch, two and a half centimetres. So here you can see that pressed into place. So what we're going to do now is just seal that with our plain sewer or twin needle or as I said cover stitch. So we're going to sew two rows. So this is our hand opening like this, so go ahead and repeat that for the other piece so you have a mirrored pair. Now find your front piece and place it right side up. So the front piece we want to work with is just take one of the pockets and work out which is the matching pair. So we want to just match a pocket to the curve here. So once you've found the right side, and in this case it's the left side, what we're looking for at the top is we're looking for the drill hole here, and over at the centre front you will find a notch here. So what we're going to do, take the pocket and flip it over. On this straight side here you'll see a notch, so we want those two notches to match like so. Just turn this around. And what we're looking for here is to rearrange our work so it's nice and flat. And what you will see is the drill hole on the pattern piece is marked at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch which means when this is sitting in the correct place we want this drill hole to sit right on the raw edge of that fabric but one centimetre three-eighths of an inch in from the edge of that fabric. So when we have that in the correct place we're going to stitch this down. So the seam allowance here is one centimetre three-eighths of an inch and if you'll see, this should now all be beautifully at right angles to the straight front seam. So just stitch a line of stitching at one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, following that straight top edge, and we want to finish directly on top of those notches. And when you've done that, just turn it back on itself and if you've done it correctly, what will happen is the top of this fold will sit on the notch here and the rest of this should all be sitting perfectly on top of each other. So 
the next thing we want to do is just stitch a line of edge stitching to hold that pocket in place. Now you can skip this if you want, but it is good for extra reinforcement. And I'm just going to stitch it in from the edge. It's a very small amount. So trim any stray threads. And now rearrange the work so that it is all matching and flat like so. So repeat that for the other side of the front. Once your pocket is finished, we can start work on the shoulders. Take the back and place it right side up. And then take a front and place it right side down and match the shoulder areas. So what we're looking for is the highest scoop goes towards the center. And when you have that into place, overlock that seam. And then match the other one and go and, and overlock that as well at the same time. So now we're going to work on the hood. To sew the hood into place, we are going to be sandwiching the body of the garment between the hood layers. So firstly go to your iron and press the shoulder seam towards the back. So this is the left side as if you wear it here, front and here's the back and the shoulder seam. Take your outside hood and place it right side down so we have right sides together. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of notches here at the front. So this notch here is our turn position that we lightly ironed. And we need to match it so that it is going to go like that. And then we are going to twist it up like so. So for now, let's just pin it into place. I'm going to put a pin at the first notch and always pin within the seam allowances. Then as we come up the hood, there's another notch. That needs to match to the shoulder seam. Then we're going to have a notch at the center back of the hood. And that is going to match the notch at the center back of our garment. Now before we go any further, we're now going to remove our pins and adjust them for the lining piece. So here is our contrast hood lining. And what we want to do is place it right side up. So this is my straight edge and this is my curved neck edge here. And we want to match it to the hood. Now as you go up you will see a notch and that notch needs to match to that shoulder so we'll be pinning through the three layers there. And as we come up there'll be a centre notch to match as well so repin that into place. So now if you need to pop some extra pins in because we need to keep all these edges together. So what's going to happen is that when this is sewn, this lining is going to sit over like so. So continue pinning around to the other side and then we'll overlock it into position. Now take your time, we've got a bit of an angle to go through. So start off at the centre front, take out your first pins, and remember to take out all your pins as you sew. So we're going to be um, doing a sharp turn. You can angle it out and make it into a curved turn if you want to. So make sure your starting positions match.
So what we're doing is overlocking just the two main layers together for that first inch, two and a half centimetres towards the notch. Then at the notch, we put in the lining area. So we're going to start with two layers and we're moving to three. Because what we want to happen is when we're finished, this is what we need it to look like. Because what's going to happen is this is going to stitch down here to create our It is a little part. tricky with the dog leg here. Don't worry if you don't get it or you cut a bit of it off. Um, the fabric is quite, quite forgiving for that. So go ahead and do that. And um, when you're finished, make sure if you haven't already that this front has a seam of two and a half centimetres, one inch, pressed into place. And then press the remaining front straight edge into place at two and a half centimetres, one inch as well. Now we're working on the sleeves. So if you open the um, shoulder area, area out right side up, so here is my hood, here is the front, and here is the back, and this is right side up as if I'm wearing it. So this is the right front here. This is our sleeve area. So at the back, you'll see two notches. We've cut a pair of sleeves, which some people call two mirrors. So there's one cut this way and one cut this way. You'll see a notch at the centre top, which is called the crown notch, and that's going to match to our shoulder. And as we come down one side, we'll see two notches. So those two notches need to match to the two notches on our garment. So pick up the sleeve that is going to match to your garment. Take your sleeve and find that crown notch and match it to the shoulder seam and hold that in place. And then find the two notches on the sleeve and match them to the two notches on the back of the garment. Making sure our garment is right sides together. So what we're going to do now is come to the starting point and we're going to overlock that sleeve in and then repeat on the other side. So let's sew the side seam and underarm seam all in one go. So take your garment and come to the wrist area and place your fabric right sides together. And we're going to start at the wrist. We're going to sew up the underarm. We're going to match the underarm seams. And we're going to match the notches as we go down towards the hemline. As you get to the underarm, if your fabric is a bit bulky, you might prefer to make sure one seam is facing up and one seam is facing down.
So as we come down the side seam, we're going to have, well, we're going to transition to three layers. So just make sure when you do get to that lower area where the pocket is, that the notches are sitting on top of each other and that we catch the pocket in um, properly. And then repeat that on the other side. And then just make sure that you have caught that pocket into the side seam properly. Now as you come to the hemline, you do need to expect that there will be a little triangle overlap like this. We need to make sure that the edge of the overlocking blade is right together as we um, come off. So we want the sew lines to match. Because we're looking for a smooth transition like that. So once you've done this side, go ahead and repeat it on the other side. I won't bother to record myself doing that. For the cuffs, we have two that are exactly the same. We're going to sew them exactly the same. So take them and place them right side up. And what we're looking for is the center notches. So we want to fold this so that the notch is on the fold. And then we're going to overlock together the other edge, making sure we have the right sides together. So you'll also know if it's the correct way because the stretch needs to run like this. So when you've done that, put your hand inside and turn it back on itself. So we have wrong sides together, right side out, and match that notch and match the seam. And then we're going to repeat it for the other cuff. If you're sewing the hemmed view, you can just go ahead now and turn that sleeve hem up at one inch, two and a half centimeters, and there'll be a notch point, and cover stitch or twin needle that down. I'm now going to show you how to sew the cuffs. I've turned the wrist area right side out, and here is the seam. I'm taking a cuff and putting it over the top and I'm going to match the seams and I'm also going to match the notch directly opposite the seam and what we need to do is gently stretch that cuff to fit so when you're ready overlock those three layers together and repeat that for the cuff on the other side. So now we're going to work on the hem facing. So come down to the hem area at the center front. Go ahead and fuse your hem facing pieces. Make sure you choose a fuse that's appropriate for your fabric type. So what we have here, this is the centre back piece, right side up, and we have two centre front pieces like so. We have one on each side. So we only need to work with one of them, and we're attaching them to either side of the centre back. So the straight piece is going at the front of our garment. So just take one and place it like so. So we want to sew this to the side. So when it's sewn into place, you'll know you have the correct side. 
first of all because we're working with the angles and second of all when we stitch it we want it to look like this when it's in place we want it to scoop up from the centre back towards the centre front like this so place the pieces right side together you'll have a notch to match in the centre and that's because we need to make sure that this is going to be sewn on the sew line if you've sewn this correctly you'll have a smooth transition like this so stitch that to one side and then right sides together do the same on the other side so that's what we're looking for like so so now we're going to overlock tidy the top edge so the edge we're looking for is not the edge with the notch in it. So one side of these will have a notch. We don't want to overlock that edge, we want to overlock the other one. Just the single layer all the way from one side to the other. Come to the centre back split position and place your piece right side up and then take the facing piece and place it right side down and match that into place. There will be notches to match as you go. Just take your time and make sure everything is in the correct position. Now because we have fused the facing piece, that's going to help make sure everything sits the right way. But it just might mean you have to give um, your fabric a little helping hand as it goes through um, the serger when we pop it into place. Now my fabric is super stretchy. I have to say it was a remnant and I just thought I would be um, testing this garment out in it but it started to come out so nicely and it is just so soft um, I decided to complete it. Right, So as we come across towards the centre front you'll notice that they don't match and that's fine. What we're going to do is take this and place it right across to the other side. So the part we overlocked is going to sit on that notch up the centre front, like so. So the first thing we want to do is just sew that facing just that very short distance. Now you can use um, your overlocker if you want, you can use your plain stitcher if you want. Just secure that into place and it's not far, it's just over an inch. what we've done and now we're going to pull it back and if you've done this properly what we're looking for is that the notch at the center front that we previously pressed should be on the edge so make sure that seam faces towards the side seam there and hold it into place with a pin and then do exactly the same thing on the other side of the centre front.
So we're going to secure that hem facing into place, but you may run into a problem through the centre back, so we're going to go over that again when we're finished with the plain sewer. So what we're going to do is starting at one side, making sure that notch is on the fold, we are going to overlock the bottom edge together, making sure the edges match. So let's go to our plain sewer and reinforce the centre back edge. Here is the overlocking I did through the centre back. Clearly even though I straightened it out like this it's not perfect and what we're going to do is just go over it with our um, plain machine. Now make sure you have a ball needle and all I'm going to do is just start from, oh it's just over an inch, a couple of centimetres before the point. I'm going to start stitching directly on the edge of my overlocking and I'm going to go up in a nice straight line. I'm going to lift with my needle down, stop with my needle down in my work, lift, turn and pivot and I'm going to stitch down to around about the same place on the other side. So just make sure that you've caught all the work in there um, perfectly. Now you might actually need to snip through the overlocking to get a nice tight turn. Um, it's never a good idea to snip through the overlocking but it's all going to be hidden in here so it should be fine. Don't go too close. Um, an eighth of an inch maybe so you want to snip up to the stitches but not through them and because it's a knit it may move more so be very careful. Leave double what you think if you do go too far, just re-stitch that up there. So what we're going to do now is turn this all through and go to our iron and give it a press. So this is the top of our split here and that's what we're looking for, just um, no pulling or tucks. Just a nice turn like so and press that with the fold all the way on the edge. Our next step is to sew the centre front hem. So what we're going to do is where we folded this over, we're going to hem from the lower edge all the way up through the hood, right through and down to the other side of the centre front. So when you cover stitch, what you're going to do, cover stitch or twin needle, is make sure that this inner layer lining is pushed all the way over to the fold the fold that we created with our iron earlier and then we're going to fold this back and we want to cover stitch here so the cover stitch amount is two and a half centimeters which is one inch and we usually do it from well we always do it from the front of the garment so make sure you hold that into place properly as you sew so what's going to happen is 
will have the fold here. When you get to the lining, the lining will be all the way against the fold and we will put that over the top like so. So at this stage you will be sewing through three layers. I've set my cover stitch up with the wide, so I'm using my left needle and my right needle and I've removed the centre needle. So this is the centre front area if you run it through with a cover seamer and if you don't have access to or don't like the look of the cover seamer what you can do or to a needle is do what I've done here and instead of using the cover stitcher what I've done is just turned under 5mm quarter of an inch and then plain stitched that down just with a straight stitch so that results in a band that's two centimeters wide, three quarters of an inch. So it's up to you whichever one you want to do. Now it's time to move on to the hem. So this is what we're looking for um, at that neck area. Okay, so it's up to you how you want to do the hem. I'm going to complete the entire hem on my plain sewer you could use a combination of um, to needle cover stitch and plain sewer if you want. The reason I'm going to do this is simply because of the back split. So what we need to do with the hem is starting here at the lower centre front we need to either twin needle or cover seam through the side seam through to the back and you could just go all the way across here and then just do this on your plain sewer. So what we're doing basically is when we get to here we're going to be stitching up, across and down through the overlocking line and then we're going to do a second row very close to the first one the same width as your twin needle just to mimic the look of it. Um, so for this I'm going to start where my um, twin needle will finish and I'm going to do the back first so I've just made the width two and a half centimeters here so when I come across hopefully everything will be lined up perfectly don't forget to make sure you have a ball needle so make sure you've test stitched before you begin so I'm going up to the edge of my um, overlocking so I'm just stitching through here through the facing I'm going to lift turn and pivot and you can do this from the back of the garment if you find it easier. And go across to the same position on the other side. I'm going to stop, lift, turn and pivot. And stitch down. And now I'm going to do my second row of stitching. same width as my cover seaming which for me is about um, four mils maybe five
So now I'm going to complete the hem. I'm going to start here, which is just at the edge of the centre back. So now I'm just going to repeat this on the other side. So you can use pre-purchased drawstrings if you like, or you can create your own draw cords. The cut measurement is on the information sheet, and all you need to do with it is to fold it in half lengthwise, right sides together, and run a line of overlocking through the edge. Then take a turning tool and turn it through so it is wrong sides together. Now I have a video on my YouTube channel of a very, very quick way of um, creating the draw cords using the um, overlocking thread to pull through. So you can just search that if you struggle with it. But other than that, um, you can use draw cords that are pre-purchased if you like. So the only problems you can run into with creating your own draw cords is they can grow if you cut them out the wrong way. So make sure the stretch grows across, not down. So what you can do is either use a safety pin and thread this through one of these buttonholes and out the other side, or um, you can use a loop turner, whatever you prefer. So when that is through you can just adjust the length to suit and then either put stoppers on the end or I'm just going to um, tie a knot and roll the knot down to the very end. And then just make sure that even amounts are pulled through on either side. And then if you want to secure that draw cord into place, what you can do is run a stitch in the ditch through one of these seams just so the draw cord can't be pulled through again. So there we have it, our garment is finished. Go ahead and do some quality control work, so just snip any stray threads and give your garment a final press. So thanks for joining me, I hope you enjoyed the sew along video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you again soon for the next sew along.